Hi everyone, let's talk about combinatorics. In combinatorics, we start with a set, A. So by set, I mean a collection of elements, such as this one, A1, A2, and so on. And then there are two tasks. The first one is usually ignored, even though it is pretty important. It is prove that A is finite. And I'll explain what exactly I mean by finite in a moment. And secondly, if A is finite, determine the cardinality of A, which we denote by absolute values. And I'll define cardinality in just a second as well. So the first question is, what do I mean by cardinality? By cardinality, I first want to mention that A has the same cardinality as B, which we denote like this. This is called equipotence. If there exists a function mapping from A to B, that is a bijection. So if such a function exists, then we say that A and B have the same cardinality and we write that the cardinality of A is equal to the cardinality of B. So these absolute values denote uh, cardinality. But what is the actual cardinality of something? So we can define finite cardinality pretty easily. If there exists a function, so actually since we have defined the function over here anyway, we can say that if A is equipotent with N, the section of N, which is equal to the set 1, 2, 3, all the way through to N, so the first N positive integers, then the cardinality of A is equal to n. Now you might be wondering can a set have two different cardinalities so it's equipotent with the section of n and the section of m but that's not possible. Um, so I'm not going to prove that but there is a theorem which says that if a is equipotent with n and a is equipotent with m then m equals to n. So cardinality is well defined. And I should also mention that if a is equal to the empty set then the cardinality of a is equal to zero and that's also finite. So a is finite if A is the empty set or A is equal to some section, finite section of the positive integers. Before we move on, I want to mention some properties of equ equipotence. These are pretty important and they come up in combinatorics and outside of combinatorics quite frequently. So the first thing is that A is equipotent with itself. We call that reflexive. The second thing is that if A is equipotent with B, then B is equipotent with A, and we call that symmetry. And the third one is that if A is equipotent with B, and B is equipotent with C, then A is equipotent with C, and we call that transitive. And th these come up quite frequently. For example, uh, if A is equipotent with B, and you know that B has cardinality N, then 
the cardinality of a is also equal to n. That's called the bijection principle. And this is one of the most important ideas in all of combinatorics that you can translate the cardinality of one set into the cardinality of another set. It's extremely important. So now that we know what finite cardinality means and what cardinality means in general, at least what it means for two sets to have the same cardinality, let's talk about what combinatoric is in, in practical terms. So practical combinatorics. If you read the essay, The Two Cultures of Mathematics by Tim Gowers, he says that the way to transmit combinatorics to the next generation is not by making them memorize proofs, but by showing them principles. So proof techniques. And there's a few of these, so I'll give you, actually there's quite a few of them, but I'll give you the basic ones. So the first one is that if A intersection B is the empty set, so A and B are disjoint, what is the cardinality of A union B? And you can probably tell that it's the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B, but what if a intersection B is not empty and what if you have more than two sets then we have what's called the principle of inclusion exclusion the second idea is what is the Cartesian product the cardinality of the Cartesian product A cross B and you can probably tell that it's the card the cardinality of A times the cardinality of B but there are also symmetric subsets of Cartesian products that often come up and I'll mention those in a different video. Thirdly, what is the cardinality of the power set of A? And finally, in, in a more general sense, what is the cardinality of the, a set that looks like this in set builder notation? So phi of x is some, that's not the empty set, that's phi of x, which is some predicate in the variable x. So this is some general description in set builder notation. And we often want to determine the cardinality of a set or approximate it based on a description in set builder notation. And that brings us to our final topic. which is that there are structures that come up in combinatorics. So there are these two kinds of universes. There is the physical universe and there is the mathematical universe. There's also the mental universe, or at least according to, I believe it's Plato or Aristotle's world of ideas. Um, but that's not as important to us right now. So in this physical universe we have let's say balls and boxes and the mathematical universe we have other kinds of structures so, such as sets, functions, graphs, and by graphs I'm referring to graph theory not like graphing uh, the way we do in high school. Uh, we have lists, we have multi-sets, we have generating functions which are formal polynomials with infinite sequence of coefficients. We have all these things and usually when we study combinatorics at first we act as if the objects of study are in the physical universe but really we're dealing with finite set theory which means we're working with the mathematical universe. So finite set theory. And that's the last idea that I want to leave you with, that combinatorics is really finite set theory. Proving that certain sets are finite 
and then approximating or exactly determining their cardinality. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.